This is the completion of the Frankenloop build. It's an EKWB uh, component uh, water loop, um, water cooling loop. Uh, so the that's a D5 pump with the MSI uh, 2080 uh, Ti uh, Gaming X Trio uh, video cards. Uh, those are the water blocks for those video cards and in the same EKWB water block for the CPU and um, it's on a, on a wet bench the Praxis wet bench I decided to go with a wet bench a while back because I was tired of digging through my case and I wanted something where I could get at all the components of my uh, my, my motherboard and then what makes this the Franken loop is the parallel connects for the um, for the hoses for the for the cooling water and as you can see I have some quick disconnects uh, and these quick disconnects are extremely useful um, it looks ugly but it's extremely useful because I can remove the video cards and without draining the whole loop and it's a huge time saver and as I was um, building this loop I ran into a lot of problems and being able to have those quick disconnects really saved me at least two or three days <laughs> worth of screwing around so it was a very very useful okay uh, so that's the build for now I do have some ideas about increasing the water flow and the uh, cooling capacity by adding a couple more radiators, but that project is going to be for another for another pandemic, <laughs> for another lockdown, so uh, another quarantine. But for now, this is done. Okay, guys, this is uh, Steve and. I've done a couple of, um, um, I don't know, videos, um, YouTubes before, but I thought I'd try something slightly different. I put a lot of effort into building this um, this water loop, and um, I'm hoping that this short presentation will help others who decide to go down this path. Um, I would like to have had a video uh, of what I'm about to talk about. Uh, to help me get going it's um, kind of daunting you sort of there are a lot of beginner guide videos and so on but this is um, this is from a guy who just jumped into the whole water cooling thing and um, my experiences of going through this uh, so I hope this is um, useful to you guys out there so the reason I went into uh, building this um, uh, water cool system is what you see before you. I went off and I bought two um, MSI uh, Trio uh, Gaming X cards. Uh, I can never say the right, call the right the, the right names. It's the uh, I've got the box right here next to me. The Gaming X Trio, the MSI Gaming X Trio. Anyway, it's the um, that's the RTX 2080 Ti. So it was the screaming forefront in graphics cards when they first came out. Um, I bought these things back uh, a couple of years ago and I was all excited uh, to the point where I drove to two micro centers uh, in order to buy two of these things because I really wanted to get the ultimate graphics experience possible. Well, as it turns out, um, this is actually a very, very bad way of putting two of these very expensive cards together. Because as you can see, there's no space in between the two. So the air cooling on the inner card is horrible. And, <clears throat> um, and it's not a good thing to have this card run so hot and, um, and, and so what I decided to do is actually do some temperature measurements 
And this is what I was getting. So I ran the 3D Mark Port Royale and then a couple of uh, games and plotted the temperature versus, um, versus time during my sort of running through the benchmarks. And I'll just concentrate on this 3D Mark Port Royale, but as you can see, um, they have, um, this is the single CPU, so the single GPU. So if I have just one running blue, this guy here, um, you sort of peak around 70, right? When you put both of them in, what ends up happening is the inner card goes all the way up to 86 and uh, or 85, 86. So your temperature limited up here. And um, the other one uh, runs at a much cooler rate. Uh, now there's obviously a difference in the load balance between the two um, because you're running SLI and so on. But uh, yeah, this is a big problem. And I decided that, so what this, what this caused me to do was essentially just use one GPU. And it was a real thorn in my side to have purchased two GPUs and have one just sitting um, by the side um, of the of my of my gaming setup, and uh, just you know it's like I spent a thousand three hundred dollars on the damn thing on the second one. And it really it's like I wanted to have them both running at the same time. So that was the big motivation to get my water cooling system going. And so I basically waited for two years and um, decided that now's the time to do it. So I did. So I went in full in on the water cooling. So here's a timeline. Uh, back on June 12th, I plunked down my credit card, placed my order with EKWB. There were two, um, as far as I could tell, there were two main companies that uh, sold the water blocks for my GPU, that's EKWB, and the other one is BitsPower, I think is the name. <clears throat> and I went with the EKWB, I, I'm not really sure why I did that. Um, I guess I had a, a better website. <laughs> so um, it took a uh, good almost two weeks. Uh, so it was over 10 days, 11 days for the actual order to arrive. There was a big delay in customs. I was tracking the order all the way through. It went to St. Louis, got stuck in customs. Um, I got a call from a lady in customs to tell me that one, 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 just one of the components, uh, $3 part had some funky, I don't know, customs, I don't know. And so we had to deal with that and it was a big, big mess for one $3 part. But anyway, finally cleared customs and it showed up on the 23rd. Uh, and then I spent the first evening, so the 23rd through the 25th, um, building my first loop. Um, that was a disaster. I'll go into uh, why it was a disaster. Um, then on the weekend of the 27th, 28th, I built my second loop, um, found out that there was another problem with it. <laughs> So I had to uh, essentially redo the water blocks and the GPUs. And then finally, I got into the whole notion of maybe I should, um, you know, so I did, so I've been, did some benchmarkings, testing the machine out, seeing how it was going. And then I decided to go all in and do the old overclocking bit. And that's a whole other chapter in itself, the overclocking. But I finally came to the conclusion uh, basically at the end of the July 4th weekend that system's running fine. All the clocks are running at optimal speeds <clears throat> and, um, and I have a good system. And I learned a lot about overclocking, which I'll let you guys know a little bit of what I learned, sort of the main things of what I learned. So anyway, so here it is, it arrived all the way from Slovenia through St. Louis and onto my por onto my uh, porch. <clears throat> and there's the box, that box came from Slovenia with all the water block components. And this is pretty much it. I posted this photo on the Reddit, uh, uh, water cooling sub, um, subreddit. I uh, got some nice comments from people and uh, I don't know, um, basically, you know, you got your radiator, you got your fans, uh, you know, tubing, fittings, um, a lot of stuff I didn't actually, I never used this, uh, 
this coolant over here. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I got it just out of, well, I should have some coolant. But I ended up going to the supermarket and getting distilled water. And I also bought, on top of this, I bought some other um, uh, chemicals that you put into the, uh, into the distilled water in order to kill all the bacteria or any, any sort of living organism that would grow inside the, um, um, inside the fluid of the, inside the liquid or whatever, the water. So anyway, so those are all the components. And my first stumbling block. I did not buy enough fittings. I just way undercounted. And the problem was I didn't actually bother to map out the loop. I sort of had it in my mind. I said, I'm gonna go do this and that and the other, and this is how I'm gonna put it together in my head. Sort of in my head counted up how many fittings I wanted. Well, that was just wrong and I was off by a lot. So I had to go to Micro Center and buy a whole bunch more fittings and I plunked down a bunch more money for the damn fittings and um, so that was a bit of a headache, um, having to do that. But anyway, um, I did, I did get all the fittings and this is what you should do. If you actually are going to put together a complicated water loop, like a water cooling system, like I have here, <laughs> um, you got to map it out and all the little, um, black triangles are fittings. And if you count them all up, it's 26. And this is actually wrong because I'm missing my um my flow meter so the flow meter requires two more fittings so yeah that was a miss. so even doing this i kind of screwed it up because i didn't put all my all the um, um everything that was going to fit into the um, into the water loop and um yeah as you can see here i built a fully parallel uh water loop i have my reasons for doing that i know that people do it serially uh, but a, one of the things I wanted to do is put together some disconnects and quick disconnects so I could pop off the, um, the GPU water blocks. <clears throat> and in order to do that properly, you really needed to have a parallel setup in order to do that. So I can individually pop these guys off without affecting the rest of the loop. Anyway, so that's what I did. So this is basically, I. Okay, I think we just had an audio malfunction. Well, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, this is not going to be edited, so I am just going to plow through here. Um, my headset just powered off. So the first thing you do is you clean your radiator. And yes, as you can see there, that is a turkey baster I was going to use to fill the radiator. Uh, cleaning the radiator, if you look it up on uh, YouTube, it's basically... You have to put in your white vinegar uh, with some distilled water, and then you pour that, and you know, then you boil it, so it has to be hot distilled water. And you sort of filled up your radiator halfway, you shake it up, pour it out, do it again and again and again, and stuff comes out. And so you get this debris, this is a coffee cup uh, with a white interior, so you can actually see the debris. And so you can see how I sort of cleaned it out. I, I kept getting debris out and I got tired of it. So I finally said, this is enough. I, I did it about five washes. Um, and then I poured um, just regular distilled water in, flushed it out one more time. And then there was a few little guys left coming out. But anyway, uh, that's what I did. I, I don't know if that's really necessary, but everybody sort of said on the YouTubes that you should do it. So I did. Anyway, so here's a fan test. So I have now put, I've assembled the radiator and the fans, and I'm doing a fan test to see how well the fans are blowing air. And it's a jet engine. And you can definitely feel the airflow being pushed through the radiator. Well, I won't go much further into that. Yeah, that's the fan test. If you guys want the full video, I'll upload it later. Uh, just put in a request. But all right, so I got my fan going. So the next thing is we started putting, or what I did is I started um, 
mounting the GPU water blocks. And so these are some photos that I took while I was actually doing the mounting. One thing you have to pay attention to is the thickness of these um, thermal pads. I was not, I was too cavalier when I was putting this on. It, um, on the front side, it's, you can't really mess it up because there's only two thicknesses, the pads that go over the memory uh, chips and then the pads that go over the uh, voltage regulators. Uh, but on the back side, there are different, uh, there are two different uh, thicknesses and if you don't do it right, it doesn't fit right, blah, blah, blah. Pay attention to the thicknesses of these, um, of your of your pads. And so that was one mistake I did. And I wish someone had told me, pay attention to the thicknesses, but anyway. So there it is fully assembled. And then I put it in and I'm really getting into it. And I've got my both my GPUs and uh, next we did the, the water block. And so here are some photos of the uh, putting the water block on. And uh, now we've got the full thing assembled. And now we're putting the fittings in, right? So now here is the first way I thought I would put this together. This was sort of in my head. The uh, quick disconnects we're gonna plug in directly into the water blocks. And um, so that's the idea. And here is sort of the finished product. Again, this is sort of how I figured I was gonna do it. Now, again, this is all called, this is the Franken loop. It's not pretty, but it's supposed to work, right? And um, here is a video of the leak test coming up. I have now powered up and uh, filled, because I'm doing a leak test of my Franken, my Franken build. And there's a lot of bubbles. Here, this is interesting. You can sort of see how the. Uh, I'm gonna check out that little vortex. You wonder how well it cools when there's a vortex like that. I don't know how well it's actually shuffling that heat away. enough then what I did is I um, I really sort of that was really cool was all I was trying to look at how the water flow would go through the water block but anyway um, <laughs> let me move on here so um, so anyway here was my first disaster water on the motherboard and I guess all you veterans would have seen that immediately when you put the disconnects directly onto the water blocks because they're sitting right over the motherboard. And so here I'm doing a test where I'm uh, popping off the disconnects to see how easy it is to do and so on. But ultimately what all this ended up having to do, so here I'm doing a single GPU test and I've removed the other GPU here um, and you can see I'm running a, a benchmark um, on the computer right now. And yes, this is the 3D Mark uh, Times by Extreme. And um, I ended up through a huge amount of effort uh, trying to just boot this thing up and, and have it run. And what was happening was just a few little tiny drops of water would fall on, on, the, on the motherboard. And sure enough, it didn't fry the motherboard. I thought it did, but it, uh, your motherboard just does not work with the tiniest little droplet of water on it. Trust me, it does not work. You can see I'm sitting here trying to use the uh, paper, uh, paper towels to sort of sponge off any small little water droplet that drops on the motherboard. Huge mistake. Putting anything that can leak onto your motherboard is a huge disaster. And it caused 
I can't imagine, uh, I can tell you, countless frustrations. I was freaking out. Um, I thought I destroyed everything. I destroyed my motherboard. I was going to have to go get another motherboard. It was just a nightmare. Anyway, so don't do that. When, <laughs> if you're going to use quick disconnects, don't put them anywhere near your, uh, your motherboard. And then the next problem was I managed through thick and thin to try to get to actually test the uh, the heat um you know uh see how much heat, you know how hot the gpus were getting and lo and behold they were just as bad or worse than with the air cooling um and so this freaked me out again so at this point i sort of threw my hands up in the air and said all right let's start from scratch and I first started by, as you can see, I took everything apart and I went in and I started looking at what happened with the paste, the thermal paste. Maybe I didn't put the thermal paste on right um, and so on. So I, um, so anyway, so I, I, anyway, so, so as you can see, then I try to, this is me putting on the thermal paste again. I did a really, really careful job of smearing it all the way across. I never do the kind of thermal pasting like this. I just put a glob on and then just forget about it. But here I did this whole thing to try to make it super coated and I don't know, kind of thermal pasting. And then um, I'm going to skip this for now. And then I decided to redesign the loop completely. And in this case, I took as my I took the disconnects and put them in the back as you can see here uh, so that when I popped off the disconnect no water would fall on the motherboard this solved the motherboard problem uh, after this this configuration here is a stable configuration at this point um, I had other problems I had to remove I'll go into that in a bit uh, I had to remove the uh, the GPU several times um, I also wanted to do benchmarking of just single GPUs and so on, just with one GPU in the system uh, to see if the <laughs> GPUs were actually working right or not. <clears throat> so um, so this was a much better configuration. This really works. I'm really happy with it. So, um, but anyway, but I still had the, the problem. So uh, after I repasted it, um, I then came, put my, the system back together and I started looking to see uh, what the um, how the thermal properties uh, were were working, how uh, hot the GPUs were getting, and uh, after that repasting that I did, or you know, um, sort of putting new thermal paste down, uh, you can see that uh, one of the GPUs looks to be pretty cool, under 50. I thought that was pretty good, and then the other one was up in the 60s. And at this point, I had no idea if this was good or bad. <clears throat> um, I didn't really find anything that would tell you this is what your water block should be running at, or your GPU, when it's water cooled, should be in this temperature range. I just had no idea what temperature ranges I should be in. But with that said, um, I spent a, I basically I took Sunday off. This is sort of, I took this, uh, these, these measurements Sunday morning and I thought, well, I sort of took a day off and started thinking about it. And I realized this was all wrong. There's, there's, I know, I knew that I did something wrong and let's see if, yes, this is my big mistake. I used the wrong screw to uh, bolt down the water block onto the GPU card. Now, EKWB ships you a bag. Um, let's see if we go back here. Um, all the way back here when I showed you here. All these little screws here. Well, what happens is EKWB gives you one little baggie with a whole bunch of screws. And as far as I can tell, they give that bag of screws for every kind of water block they have. So you get a mix of a whole bunch of screws and nuts that you don't even need. Now, I should have read very carefully the instructions on what screws to use. They tell you what screws to use. 
Um, I didn't bother to measure the screw. I didn't, I mean, what do I know about screws? It's a, uh, it's an M4 by four or an M2 by four. I don't know what it's some, something I, I should have looked it up. I should have been more careful about it, but I didn't. And I'm an idiot for doing that. And what ended up happening was I saw, I had these different screw lengths and I said, well, let's use a longer screw. Because, you know, a longer screw is a better screw. <laughs> but what ends up happening is the longer screw, and it actually, um, there's, a, uh, there's a standoff that's um, on the water block. And as you screw it in into the standoff, this is the water block, this is the GPU. Um, it hits the bottom of the standoff and leaves a small little space between the water block this is the water block and the GPU. Now, if you use the right size screw, then when you screw it in, you actually get a full seal. And I figured that out when I was biking on Sunday. And so Sunday night, I stayed up till, I don't know, midnight, one or two o'clock in the morning. And I took apart my video, my uh, the GPUs again, and removed all the long screws. And yes, I use exclusively long screws on all of them and I put the short screws in. And clearly when I started tightening the short screws, it was clear that that was a problem because you could feel as you were tightening the screws, how you were making contact and pressing that thermal paste uh, between the water block and the, and the GPU. And there was this sort of, I, all I can say is I, I, when you turn and tighten the screw, it's just had that feel that you were squishing that the thermal paste together or you're squishing the thermal paste and making a really good contact. So that was a problem. And once I did that, um, I, um, I, I solved, I got a better results. Uh, here is some photos of, you know, again, taking the, 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 the the water blocks off, uh, I'm trying to determine what I did wrong. Um, well, anyway, uh, as you can see over here, uh, here is the, uh, the GPU um, out of the, the loop and with the, uh, with the water, <laughs> with the water pipes or with the water hoses. And it's really nice. You can just pop off the, uh, the GPU do what you have to do and then uh, pop it back into the loop. It's very convenient to have these disconnects. All right, so anyway, more photos of more pasting. And then once I put it all back together again, uh, the temperatures uh, are, are better. So now one of them is running or in the low 40s, the other one's running and um, in the sort of mid 40s. Uh, this is, two, I believe it's two GPUs together. It's not uh, individual GPUs running by themselves. It's actually both of them running together. Um, so, all right, one, two, two, testing. Yeah, my, my headset sort of powers off. It's out of power off and power back on again. Anyway, so, um, so yep, so that fixed it. And, um, and I was like all excited that it's all working now. So it's done. I finished it. The build is done. I got the small screws in there. Uh, it's, it's actually cooled and I was all set to go and, and I was really happy. And so, yeah, um, tossed out all the boxes and all, all the empty boxes. But this was just the end of the beginning because I uh, started going into overclocking. I decided why, if it's now so cool, why not overclock it? I mean, the whole point of this whole water cooling is you have uh, the ability to push the the, 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 the GPU um, sort of harder because now you don't have all the thermal limits that are in play, right? So, um, so anyway, uh, so anyway, so that's what I wanted to do, but um, how do I know if the GPUs are, oh, so, I had a big problem. I didn't know what, what, how do you know your GPUs are properly overclocked? What are the indications? What do you look for? Um, you know, I had, this is a big learning curve for me. 
And so I, you know, it was frustrating. I, I had to look up a whole bunch of GPU, uh, uh, YouTubes, and so on. Um, but I finally got to the bottom of it. And after spending countless times of running benchmarks over and over and over again, trying to see if you know there was any real gain in the in the um, in the overclocking, I finally sort of reached the point where I think I understand what's going on with the overclocking and um and i'm sort of i'm sort of done with it right uh for all you guys that want to get to overclocking there's a gazillion overclocking um uh, youtubes out there i can condense it all down into just a few words you run the msi afterburner you have this power and this is what i'm saying here is for the rtx 20 ti okay it's probably different for other video cards, but for the RTX 20 Ti, what happens is the following. You have this little power uh, limit, put it at, max it out. This core voltage here, ignore it. It actually does nothing for you. Then what you gotta do is you gotta pump up the core clock until your GPUs crash, and then step it back a little bit. And then you pump up the memory clock until your GPUs crash, and then you step it back a little bit. At that point, you've overclocked it and gotten as much as you can out of the system. In the end, this is the settings that I have for my system. I have decided overclocking is really not worth it. <laughs> The only thing I do is I pump up the power to 110% and leave everything without overclocking. I just leave it as is. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit. But here is another very important uh, table that I ran across. Uh, I have to give um, uh, credit to Jay's uh, Two Cents uh, 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 sort of uh, a YouTube video channel. Uh, this one is, um, I found it at one titled, this video card is not for the faint of heart, and that's the link to the, uh, to the video if you want to go see it. Basically, he was um, uh, trying to overclock a kingpin uh, PCB. <clears throat> and what they're showing you here is these are the core clocks of that drive the GPU. And this is basically how fast on a kingpin PCB you can push it for the various temperatures. And as you can see, as you go down in temperature, so that's 60 degrees, 50, 30, 10, minus 10 degrees C, et cetera, all the way down to liquid nitrogen. This is all about liquid nitrogen, and I'm never going to go there. You know, trying to cool your GPU with liquid nitrogen, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a whole other story. But... We're, I'm sort of in this realm right here, somewhere between 30 and 50. And as you can see, as high, I'm not going to go further than 220, I mean 2200 or 2200 megahertz, 2.2 gigahertz. I'm not going to go beyond 2.2 gigahertz. Um, and so now I know from this, from this table, if I get in the range of 2.1, 2. 2. anywhere in the 2.1 plus gigahertz range, you have reached the limits of the card. And again, one of the one of the things I've learned about this um, this RTX uh, 20 uh, 2080 Ti is they've shut down the power, so you can't really increase the power to the, um, to the GPU. So even though you're running really cool and there's a whole bunch of temperature headroom, there's no way you can really push it. You, know, you could do it, but you would have to like load, um, flash it with a custom BIOS, and I'm just not going to go there. But at least I know from this what the limits are, how high I can actually make my GPU run. So, um, and now the other thing, just to go back here, um, I don't have a table on this. Um, I learned something about the memories. Now there's some, something about Micron, I think it's Micron versus Samsung. I know Samsung is the, the memory chip maker, the, the company that makes the memory chips uh, for, the, uh, for the GPUs. Uh, I'm not sure what the other one is, but they, I don't know, there was some, some YouTube I, read, I watched 
and they went on and on about how Samsung is really, really good. And you should be able to overclock by a gigahertz your memories. <clears throat> so um, uh, the Samsung, you should be able to uh, overclock up to like 1.2 gigahertz. Now standard clocks for um, the uh, for the card that I have, and it might be across all the RTX 20 um, the 2080 Ti's, is um, the the memory clocks run at seven gigahertz. Um, now seven gigahertz, according to what MSA Afterburner actually shows. If you use another uh, tool like uh, GPU Z, that's another one that I was using, it reports the, cl the the memory clock as a factor of four or less. So it's going to be somewhere in the 1.7 gigahertz up to the two gigahertz, something like that, depending on how much you boost it. So um, there's some weird clock divide going on there with the memories. Um, but anyway, from the MSI afterburner. When you set this, in, when you're at the zero, that means that there's no extra sort of boosting. Um, you're running at seven, um, at seven gigahertz. So anyway, so that's pretty much it for the overclocking. Is um, you know you boost the core clock and you boost the memory clock. All right. So with all that, I can some. So this is sort of the last sort of slide here is. Um, okay, so we got some results from the overclocking, and this is how I know that my GPUs are running fine. <clears throat> so I'm boosting my core clocks uh, by by plus 130, right? That's 130 um, uh, megahertz, and when I run the test, my uh, I did everything using the Port Royal. Um, uh, benchmark. This is the 3D Mark Port Royale. It uh, seemed to push the GPUs the hardest. Uh, one thing I did is I had a voltage, a power monitor. There's these, there's these, there's these uh, instruments that you can buy that you plug into your power line, and it measures what the voltage is and what the current draw is and what the power draw is and stuff like that. So using that, I could actually see what the power draw of the whole computer was, uh, the whole gaming system was, what the power supply was actually drawing. And the Port Royal benchmark would draw the most power. Uh, so I assume that was stressing the GPU the most. But anyway, um, when I pushed it, this was um, how high I could push the core clock and the memory clocks to, uh, while they were keeping them stable. And notice the core, um, the core clock was running somewhere between 21, 2.1 and 2.115 gigahertz. And as you saw from the previous, um, from the from the pre from this uh, chart, I'm right. Okay, one, two, three, testing. I hope I'm back. Yeah, I think I'm back. So, yeah, so you can see I am right in that sweet zone of where I'm going to be running. So I never was able to get to 2.2 uh, gigahertz, but that's the kingpin sort of PCB. This is an MSI PCB. But I'm clearly in the ballpark of pushing the limits of the, of the, of the core clock. And then uh, the fact that I'm able to run at 1200 or, or megahertz or 1.2 gigahertz um, overclock on the memory clocks from what I heard from another YouTube uh, about talking about how the Samsung memories and I have Samsung memories on my GPUs um, that I should be able to do that and I can. So, um, so anyway. And um, so anyway, these are the scores that I'm getting. I don't know if anybody knows the 3D Mark scores, how, um, you know, if you guys are proficient in that. Um, I guess the one thing is I got almost identical scores between the two. The two basically max out essentially at the same. So there's really no preference or there's nothing between different between the two um, uh, cards. So I don't think, I didn't bust the cards. Um, I didn't damage them. Uh, they seem to be running just fine. 
Um, the only thing I don't have is the temperatures, but I believe the temperatures were running basically the same. Um, and then just to see what happened if I don't boost it. So the base um, clocks um, are for the MSI is somewhere between, uh, it runs somewhere between 1980 and 1995 uh, megahertz <clears throat> with uh, the memory clocks running at uh, seven gigahertz. These are the three mark scores. Uh, so when it's water cooled, this is what you're running at. Now, one thing that I did play around with and I saw was this, the power limit. So there's some way of, I don't know, I don't quite understand the, the whole power limit thing. But if you scroll this this power limit all the way to 110, or if you, or if you do or you don't, you leave it at 100, right? Um, so I left that at 100, sort of the original settings, and it's completely reset. Uh, you can see what you get uh, if you do that or you turn on the power and nothing else. And the only thing that I saw difference was the core clock would sort of go back and forth between 1980 and 1995 when it was at 100. And when you put 110, the core clock was at a steady 1995 just steady as she goes throughout the whole benchmark that's what she ran at and you get a slightly better benchmark because of that so I don't know that's a nuance uh, you guys for you guys out there um, and then uh, I have I guess I wanted to see what the difference was when I put in the dual GPU if I don't uh, boost it uh, just leave it alone uh, or if I turn on the overclocking. For the dual GPU, I had to turn it down by uh, one. I couldn't get it to 130. Um, I can only get it to 120. But anyway, so again, the core clock is slightly lower, um, essentially by one tick, um, than when I was running just a single GPU at a time. Memory was the same. And basically, I didn't quite double the 3 mark score, but almost did. Uh, didn't quite double the um, the frame rate, but I almost did, and um, which is really quite impressive when you get that. Uh, well, between the single GPU and uh, the dual GPU, uh, going from no boost to boosting, you go from 86 to 92. It's a fairly marginal gain. The main gain you get is going from one GPU to two GPUs. There's no doubt about that. That's the reason why I got the second GPU. <laughs> and then what I did is I decided to um, try um, a benchmarking on Red Dead Redemption. Now, Red Dead Redemption is a single GPU benchmark because um, it just does, it does not run. The PC version of Red Dead Redemption 2 does not run when SLI is enabled. It just it just crashes essentially the game crashes uh but what i wanted to do was to see you know what is the difference between boosting and not boosting so this is not boosting the frame rates so the average frame rate was 72 when i boosted it the average frame rate went up to 80 when it went from 73 to 80 and you know um i have some thoughts about that later it's you, you can, it's a measurable difference but I don't know if it really matters. And then I think the last uh, kind of important benchmark here was when it was I had my air-cooled system. And I went back and I dug through all my benchmarks to see what I was really curious at this point was what was going on with the core clock when I was air-cooled. And lo and behold, the core clocks are very unsteady and quite low. Um, and so my big takeaway from all of this is it was worthwhile doing the air cooling. The core clocks became very, very steady. They're only sort of, they only bounce around by one or two clicks. Here they're bouncing around all over the place. We have all sorts of thermal limits that are going on. Um, as, it's, as the temperatures are rising, it's driving down the, uh, the, the core clock fre frequency in order to compensate for these higher temperatures. So, <clears throat> so yeah, it's a um, big difference between these core clocks, the, the, these frequencies, and what you get when you're water-cooled. 
So, um, and then if you look at the benchmark for the Port Royal uh, between, um, I guess you would want to compare, let's see, what are we looking at here? Yeah, this is, I think this is for a single, this is a single CPU. Yeah, so if we compare the single CPU, um, well, you get 41 frames per second versus 47. Uh, for a dual, we have 80 frames per second versus, uh, if we want to do apples to apples, uh, 86. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely running better. But it's, I don't know, for me, having a steady GPU clock sort of makes, that's, that's what I want. I want a steady <laughs> GPU clock, a nice stable GPU clock um, that I'm getting from the water cooling. Anyway. So, final thoughts. Uh, water cooling is extremely expensive. Um, I basically spent over two grand on all the water blocks, all the pipe fittings, all the, uh, you know, all the little gizmos that I got with it, you know, the, uh, so I got a flow meter and um, I don't know, I ended up, even though I ended up getting too many uh, fittings after, <laughs> I, it was all said and done. Um, and of course, man, the only reason I did this was because of my dual GPU thing. And um, one thing that uh, I now will do in the future is pay more attention to which PCB, which one of those third party um, video cards you get, because there's a big difference in the quality of the PCBs. And the MSI uh, Gaming Trio X is, it's kind of a meh. Um, I, there's this one guy on who puts out YouTube's where he goes through the PCB and goes through every how they've actually laid out the board and the power distributions and all the voltage regulators and this and that and the other. And I was not impressed with uh, what he had to say about my card. Um, and of course, if you're going to go into all this water cooling, you've got to do the overclocking. And finally, one of the, I finally stopped doing the overclocking. <laughs> When, well, once I figured out how, how high I could go, and then I realized, well, it's really not that much. You only get a marginal gain when you do the overclocking. And when you want to play a video game, it all comes down to is playing the video game and your sort of personal experience in playing that video game, I just could not tell a whiff of difference between it being overclocked or not. Um, and you know, I had the frame rates going and I was looking at the frame rates to see if that was getting higher frame rates or lower frame rates. And you only can measure the frame rate differences when you actually run the specific benchmarks uh, because then they actually measure them, calculate them, and then they give you a final summary of what your frame rates are like they do with Red Dead Redemption 2. And there's other video games that do that, but you just don't get the, um, you know, it's just, a few frames per second more and um, depending on I guess the monitor you get I got a uh, an LG the two three testing are we back okay we're back so yeah so anyway um, I got an LG the 38 inch uh, monitor that I think runs at 144 uh, Hertz and is quote-unquote overclocked to 170 Hertz or something like that uh, it just came, it came out, um, I don't know if it was a year and a half ago or I think it was a year and a half, or maybe it was last winter that I got it. I might've gotten it. I think I got it last November, December. Um, but it's an amazing monitor. And, um, when I play my video games, it's like buttery smooth and, uh, with a G-Sync, you know, running, um, you know, a few frames a second, more or less, just does not change the experience, sort of the, the gaming experience. So, so don't do over, <laughs> so all this water cooling stuff is, um, you really have to be a sort of an enthusiast to get into it. Um, uh, if it really comes down to the gaming experience. Now, I, I I've, got the impression that a lot of uh, first-person shooter games um, 
uh, you need very, very fast response times in order to be able to sort of uh, be competitive in sort of the online sort of competition stuff and all that. I'm not an online gamer. I like to play sort of this, the story mode and work through the story and then I'm done. I don't really do the online stuff. So, um, but, but the thing that really made a difference, I think, is having the two GPUs. Um, unfortunately, I just have a quick rant here. There are some video games out there that don't use the SLI. They just stick to one GPU, and it really sort of gets me really mad. But there are still a few video games out there, like um, the Tomb Raider, the Shadow Tomb Raider. That one, they actually use both GPUs. And when I play it, I get frame rates of like 140, 150, 160. And it's just buttery smooth. And it's just, you know, I run it at full K, at, you know, the full full resolution of my 38, 38-inch monitor. And, uh, you know, you crank up all the visual settings to the maximum. And it's just an amazing experience to be able to play a game like that. So... Um, so yeah, so I overclock, I mean, I water cooled, I did the water cooling, um, hopefully I won't have a leak and I won't, uh, destroy my motherboard, <laughs> but anyway, it's done. So, uh, thank you guys. I hope this is all useful for you, uh, guys who are thinking about, uh, doing, uh, uh, diving into water loops, uh, into water cooling. And I leave you this last video. My, um the loop by accident and when I spliced it back together again and introduced the bubbles this gives me a chance to video the block the water block from the bubbles which actually